In the Syrian town of Hama, the water wheels have long had their day. For centuries, they lifted water from the river into irrigation canals and provided a landmark for locals to be proud of. Although still a symbol of Hama, a lack of water means they turn more slowly nowadays, if at all. The water shortage in Hama is typical of the whole region. The Middle East is one of the driest places in the world. Most of the land is desert and water is scarce and precious. People here have less than 100 litres of water each at their daily disposal, less than half of the amount Europeans have. In the Middle East, people are thirsty for water and for peace. And peace will not be accomplished until the water problem is solved. The fight for water among Middle Eastern neighbours makes the region one of the most explosive in the world. The river Euphrates is the longest river in Southwest Asia. Its course of 2,700 kilometers takes it from north to south through Turkey, Syria and Iraq. It joins the Tigris River in Iraq and flows on to the Persian Gulf. All three countries depend on the Euphrates and are constantly battling among themselves for the water it provides. Yet with the Euphrates source in the East Turkish highlands, Turkey has the clear advantage. Three Turkish dams along the Euphrates take the lion's share of the river and several other dams are planned or under construction. The dams are part of Turkey's Southeast Anatolia project. The government aims to increase economic output fourfold by the year 2005. It's an ambitious plan which demands ever more water. The problem for Turkey's neighbors is that water taken from the upper reaches of the river deprives them of water downstream. 500 cubic meters of Euphrates water per second flow over the southern border to Syria. This simply isn't enough and past disagreements over the amount of water have put relations between Ankara and Damascus under strain. A hot, dry summer like the last one doesn't help matters. Up to now, ongoing negotiations have prevented the water row from bursting into armed conflict, but it threatens to break out at any time. I do think that one scenario that is, is, is possible is the armed conflict because of water. Because if people are, hung, are thirsty, they are ready to go to war, there's no doubt about that. Uh, this is a very serious source of concern for this century now. A very serious uh, risk of war and uh, conflict, armed conflict, is, is water. That's why it's very important that the, that the countries of the region, assisted and supported by the international community, conclude agreements that are reasonable. Jordan would already be high and dry if such an agreement didn't exist with Syria. Here, water is especially scarce and the inhabitants of the capital, Amman, are grateful for every extra drop. Help has been coming their way since last July from a dam near Dara in the north. Syria has offered to help the Jordanians with an extra 8 million cubic meters. This alleviates their problem but does not solve it. One of the main problems is that precious drinking water is used in farming. Purified wastewater would do just as well, but no one has the expertise or technology to implement alternative methods. Streams are running dry and springs are disappearing at an alarming rate, calling for urgent action. Here in the Middle East, tense political issues with neighboring lands can decide the fate of every cubic meter of water. Water is a luxury. Here in Israel, it's guarded by the military. These baths on the Golan Heights have been a profitable business for over 23 years. The ruins on the highest plateau are testimony to a war which was waged partly for strategic reasons. Israel has occupied the Golan Heights since 1967. They used to belong to Syria. And the baths are not the only asset which was fought for. The source of the River Jordan is also located on this land. 
The River Jordan is vital to Israel. It provides the only water available all year round in the surrounding desert, and it runs into Israel's chief freshwater reservoir, Lake Genezareth. The lack of rainfall is an increasing problem. The water level of the historic lake is sinking and its territory is contested. Syria demands access to the lake, yet Israel is not prepared to give up any of its precious water. The fate of Lake Genezareth is a key issue for a peace agreement between the two countries. Yet an agreement with Syria could spell the end for the Maya Eden factory in Golan. Their bottled water is sold in Israeli supermarkets. If the mountains were given to Syria, the spring would also belong to Israel's other neighbors. But water is scarce enough as it is in Israel. It makes more sense to buy water where it's abundant, for example, in Turkey. Negotiations regarding this are already taking place. In most Middle Eastern countries, there simply isn't enough money to buy water although the population is steadily growing and in need of more and more water. Without a peaceful agreement between these countries, the struggle for water could develop into open conflicts.